So as we continue with our Interfix live conversations, we're joined with Krista Myers from CRB. Krista, how are you doing today? Doing great. Great. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about the work that you do there at CRB. So my name is Krista Myers. I've been with CRB for about 19 years. Uh, I've been a design engineer here at CRB that amount of time. I get involved with our work on our clients for major changes and minor changes in their facilities. I've worked in biotech for many years, supporting fermentation and mammalian cell culture operations for our clients. But my favorite work is doing work on aseptic fill lines. Uh, I love to see the fast progression of how isolators and fill lines have changed our industry in the past few years. I also do a lot of work with PHAs, process hazards assessments or hazards analysis for our clients. And then the other risk assessment work related to the risk-based approach that our industry is going to. Uh, it's important for me to understand the cost and facility implications of implementing common versus cutting edge techno technologies for our clients. It's really important for us to be able to understand how those decisions are gonna affect the bottom line for our clients so that they can make good decisions for their operations. Absolutely, and I would think one of the biggest issues that you may come across in working with folks is, is biofilm as a contaminant and as something to avoid. Maybe you can talk a little bit about your experience there and, and pass along some of your thoughts. So biofilms is an interesting topic. Um, when I was an operator, I worked in a fermentation suite and did work in a, a purification suite, and we actually had a small clinical filling area as well. Uh, early on in my career, we I learned kind of what a biofilm was, had no idea what I was walking into when we started talking about it. But it's a real interesting topic because it really affects all of our facilities. And when you find a biofilm, you've got to be careful with what you do and how you approach the issue. Uh, you know, the biofilm is all over the place. Uh, the plaque in our mouth, there are dentists to clean off our teeth. That's a biofilm. There are biofilms of different types in streams, uh, in any kind of aqueous system that's out there. And the funny thing is, is that the biofilms themselves are stronger than the individual living organisms. Uh, the biofilms create a barrier to keep you from cleaning it off of what it's on. So it's a real fun thing to get involved with. Um, it's, and it can be more than just bacterium. It can be fungi, it can be yeast, it can be algae, it can be other debris that's used for their food sources and whatever they can collect to uh, keep their growth uh, going on in the facility or the, the area of the facility that you don't want them in. So we do a lot of things in the design side of uh, process to make sure that we can fight against these things. A lot of the work that we do on surface finished, making sure our facilities are built so that they have a certain surface finish on the equipment is is for not only the pure the purity of the product but, but to also prevent microorganisms from attaching to and growing on these vessels or in this pipeline but you know biofilms occur outside of the piping as well anywhere we get drips anywhere we get condensate on the outside of lines it's possible for biofilm to grow so you have to also be careful in your mechanical spaces and in your support spaces that are around your facility or around your process. So complex equipment uh, that have a lot of little parts, things like vial washers. It's very common to come across this in vial washers and, and ha you have to take a real advanced approach to make sure that you can get it off and clean and to keep your pieces and parts clean. Parts washers another place. Um, drains and process spaces. It's not unusual for us to not want drains and process spaces for this very reason. So we push drains into the mechanical spaces, but now I'm in an uncontrolled environment and now I can create biofilms in places that are maybe not designed with perfectly cleanable surfaces. So it's not uncommon to find biofilms either behind a panel of say an autoclave or a parts washer, uh, around lyophilizers, around gaskets where there are leaks that are occurring. So it's a very critical thing to look for. Now, when you find a biofilm, what you usually do, what we see our clients do that we really want uh, to see changed in our industry is a lot of people just go grab the biggest bottle of bleach they can find, make the strongest solution they think they can stand. And, and a lot of times in our industry, more seems to be better, particularly for uh, inexperienced personnel. And they start, they start spraying bleach around the facility. So this can make the problem worse. So now you really start attacking the equipment that you have made sure that you have a nice polish on and your, where those those surfaces where you're trying to prevent that biofilm from growing now you've hit it with a harsh chemical that can degrade the surface or cause rust and cause other places for the for things like this to grow 
So it seems like the the approach here is, is really kind of shaking down the paradigms of what are typically in place or how people respond to these types of trying to avoid these biofilms. What are some things that you've seen as being very successful approaches in, in helping to, to avoid the, the negative elements of them? So what I what I like to see in a facility, I want I love it when the quality people get involved and the scientists get involved. And so you have people out in the facility taking samples. It's not just uh, using heat and chemicals to kill it, but you actually do some sample taking so that you can culture the samples in the lab. You can identify the general species of what you're dealing with. And then now you can test the chemicals in the lab to see how these things are going to react and how you're going to be able to kill them. So in many of our facilities, we have, uh, we have multiple, uh, multiple chemicals that are used for cleaning in our facilities. And it's a industry suggestion, it's not a requirement, but it is a suggestion in the industry to even for your sport, sport cleaning materials or your sport, sport cleaning chemicals to do a rotation of those so that the spore forming microbe that you're fighting doesn't build up a resistance to and stop working with that chemical. So I really want to see a rigorous scientific based approach to the dealing with the organisms that are not supposed to be in our facility. Sure. What are some of the bigger challenges then that, that processors face in terms of incorporating those types of approaches? Is it, is it a cost? Is it time? Is it training? What would you say it is? I think a lot of it's training. I think a lot of it's, uh, it's not a lot of cost for the cleaning chemicals, but you do, there is some cost and some time associated with the whole identification method and making sure that you're doing what you're supposed to and that you can get the kill that you need. Uh, the surface contact on these biofilms, these biofilms are not just one cell. When we get counts in these rooms and we've discovered that we've got a growth like this, it's not just one or two cells. A biofilm can be anywhere, anywhere from a small colony of cells up to multiple layers thick. It's kind of like when you're in your bathroom and you're cleaning things off the shower stall, it's very hard to get everything off. It's very hard to get everything clean. Our facilities are even more important and have a more, uh, probably have more cracks and crevices than our shower stalls do at the house. And so you have to look at the chemistry that you're using with those. You know, a lot of the chemi chemicals that are used are sodium hypochlorite bleach, uh, quaternary compounds, and then paracetic acid is used a lot. But what I see coming up in the industry and one of the new trends that we see is that people moving into using things like the atomized hydrogen peroxide fogging or the pure pyrocetic acid fogging that both dry, that both scan fog and Marcor use with their Marcor uses it with their mini. Um, the other one that's coming up hard in our industry is uh, chlorine dioxide farming, farming, <laughs> chlorine dioxide fogging by chlordysis. Uh, it's used heavily in foods, it's used heavily in healthcare and in vivariums. In the pharmaceutical industry, we're starting to see some of it in the clean rooms. But again, these are surface decontaminants. So you have to make sure you have to go back and use a scientific approach to test and confirm that you got the full organism or the full colony of organisms. Makes sense. A lot of things we can continue talking about with, with biofilms. I don't know if there's anything else you'd like to add. Uh, you know, I don't think so. Uh, I, it would be, if you're at the show at Interfax, it would be a good thing to go. If you're having problems with this, it would be a good thing to go to talk to SCAN and to talk to uh, Marcor and to talk to Chlordysis about this. They, they have made their business and made their living around this. And so there's a lot of great scientists that can give you a good approach to making sure that you're doing the right thing in your facility. Absolutely. Speaking of Interfex, is there a particular thing about the show that you look forward to each year? So Interfex is one of our favorite shows. Uh, it's a go-to show for us, for our young engineers as well as for our senior engineers. Uh, we like to take many of our young engineers to the show and take them through and show them all the components that we use in all, on our drawings each day. So when we do design systems or when we're designing systems, we're looking at valves, we're looking at diaphragm valves and ball valves and relief devices and things like that. This is one of those great shows that I can take them component by component and show them exactly what's there. But the best part about it is that there's hands-on equipment displays. I can take them and show them what these uh, pieces of equipment are. I can show them how to work with it and I can show them where pinch points are going to be. Same thing for our clients. Uh, it's one of the greatest shows to go to because the experts of the industry show up. So those people, those scientists that you may not have daily contact with, you can go and take a couple of days 
and just ask as many questions you want to. And most of them love it. So it's a, the other thing we see is that it's an important meeting place. Um, it helps you understand all the components, the packaged equipment and the skids that you're planning on. It allows you to work with network with in, leaders in the industry and allows you to understand how your decisions will affect your timeline and your bottom line. So Krista, CRB is also doing something called Tech Tank at Interfex, as I understand. Maybe you could tell us a little bit more about that. That's right. It's one of the things that we really enjoy doing with Interfex. Uh, we get up and we talk about this year, what we're talking about are disruptive technologies. These are the technologies that will force us all to really change the way we think about the design of our biotech operations and fill finish operations. And we have several uh, speakers at that this year that should really give you an eye-opening view into what the next five years, 10 years, and 20 years is gonna look like in our industry. Absolutely. Krista, thanks so much for the, uh, the input on the biofilms as well as on Interfax. Appreciate your time this afternoon.